Hey there Tesla fans, Aaron Rath here with Rats Tesla and it is that time for this video. I've been waiting to make this video for a while. We have our one year review of our 2021 Tesla Model Y Performance in the multi-coat red. Not only is it a one year review, but it's 20,000 miles as well. I have a 20,000 mile video we just turned over on our last road trip. We'll pop that in here in just a little bit. But I want to talk about a few things in this one year review. And thanks for watching Rats Tesla. Before we get diving too far into this video, I just want to thank our sponsor of today's video. That's Vosh Auto Care uh, car cleaning products. I absolutely love them. I've had a chance to use them now for a while and they are top notch. But I also want to let you know to make sure you stick around to the end of this video because I'll be giving my, my final thoughts, my thoughts on EV ownership and whether or not jumping into an electric vehicle is the right move for you. I'm out here at the local high school today. It's a beautiful day out. So I thought I would come out and shoot this video and get this done. And I also just noticed that I have a screw in my tire. It hasn't affected the air pressure. So I'm wondering if it's going to go through, but I'm going to test out my tire repair kit later today. I'll make a video on that and you guys can watch that as well. So make sure that you're subscribed to the channel hit that uh, bell button so you know when I put videos up and also uh, drop a comment below like the video and hey it doesn't cost you anything but it just helps the channel out so I have my phone here so I can make sure I touch on all the topics that I want to talk about so as I make this video I'm at just over 21,400 miles so we just took a road trip to South Dakota the second road trip and we'll talk about road trips in just a minute but the second road trip that we've taken in this car not only did we turn over 20,000 miles on the way there we turned over 21,000 miles as well and um, I absolutely love this car as we get going uh, like I said, we're going to put in that 20,000 uh, mile video right here so that you can watch us turn over 20,000. We celebrated a little bit on the road and just had a good time Go. with it. All right, so we just went over a year with the Tesla and that was about a week ago, four days ago, and we are just about to turn over 20,000 miles on the odometer. Let's sit in awe and wait. In awe. Right there. We're going to go over 20,000 miles in the Tesla in just over a year on a road trip to South Dakota. And this is like the longest mile ever. <laughs> Almost there. There it is. 20,000 miles. Woohoo. We did it. 20,000 miles. Is that a lot of miles? The biggest thing that, that I've noticed in this one year, and probably the thing that I get asked the most about is, is there really any savings to owning an EV? So my, my straightforward answer and my short answer is yes, absolutely. There is a ton of savings, but then people ask to prove it. So I have gone through and put down some numbers. I use the app Optowatt, and I'll put a link down below to Optowatt. It's an app that you can get. I know it's on iPhone. I believe it's on Android. And you can track the charging for your EV. And I don't, it, it's open to more than just Teslas. It's, it's all EVs. I actually have a code that will get us both $5 if you sign up and use my code. So I'll put that down below as well. But using the Optowatt, app because I put it on my phone immediately when I brought my car home because I'd watched videos. I know that to charge what I've charged up to, and this is up through 21,383 miles, you'll see in the screenshot that I'll put up here for you. 
It has cost me $565 to charge for that. And that's not including superchargers in there, but I can tell you that on top of that 565 for home charging, I have charged $277 for supercharging for the two road trips that we've taken. That's the only time I've used superchargers is on those two road trips. So basically you're looking at what? 630 830 some odd dollars 840 some odd dollars for one year's worth of charging to include two road trips and uh day-to-day -day driving and weekly driving of about 400 miles and i've done videos on this um, so if you want to check out my videos on fuel savings i'm coming from a 2016 um ram 1500 sorry i lost track there with 35 inch tires it was lifted it was it was um it was uh, tuned so i had to put high octane fuel in there and so i figured an average of 70 dollars on a fill up again that's that's average sometimes it was a little less sometimes it was a little more average of 70 dollars a fill up and about five tanks of gas a month just based on how much i drive would be about 350 dollars a month that's $4,200 a year in my simple math. And that's a savings of about $3,600 in the first year. So in the first year I saved $3,600 in fuel savings and it has allowed me, basically every three months I get a free car payment. Now, if you looked at the OptiWatt app and I'll put that data back up here, you can see that um, they they say I saved about the same amount. So, you know, if fuel savings for this car are phenomenal. That is the number one thing that I love about this Tesla Model Y. Probably the second thing that I love most about my Tesla Model Y, beyond the performance of this car, I mean, this car is just, it's it's so fast and it's a head turner as i as i show you the car and as i i'll talk about this the performance of this car and the looks of this car are absolutely phenomenal but probably the the second thing that i like most about this car is the maintenance costs sure i put new rims and tires on here and i did that and i don't count that as maintenance because i actually still have the other rims and tires in my garage and if i wanted to put them back on i could that was more of a modification than maintenance when we start talking about true true maintenance costs i have spent four dollars and 99 cents in maintenance and that's because i had to fill up my windshield washer fluid and i could have done it for 2.99 but i put the the good stuff in for 4.99 and that that's it that's all i've had to do in this first year no oil changes no issues with um with any other fluids no brake issues no brake fixes nothing like that four dollars and 99 cents now i'm also the kind of person that can do some maintenance on my own like tire rotations i'm not going to pay someone to do a tire rotation i can do that in my garage so if you had to do a tire rotation that's probably 50 100 bucks something like that um if you have tesla come out and do it it's going to be a little bit more expensive but like i said i i have the the knowledge and the and the tools in my garage to do it on my own so I have spent a whopping $4.99 in maintenance in this first year, and that is just absolutely awesome. <clears throat> the third thing is, is driving. Is, and by that I mean two, two things. First, on road trips, and second, on my day-to-day -day commute. Road trips, this car, I've taken it on two road trips to South Dakota from Northern Colorado, about 1,400 miles each way or a round trip I should say and it's averaged about a hundred well I spent two hundred and seventy seven dollars charging uh, for um, road trips I spent a hundred and forty dollars on one trip and a hundred and thirty seven dollars on another trip and it, it was just phenomenal that that we could do that trip my wife took the exact same trip in her Volkswagen Tiguan, averaging 28 miles per gallon, and her fuel costs were $370 for the round trip. So I'm about a 
$210 cheaper in fuel costs on that same road trip. So sure, it takes a little bit longer. I think that trip took me about an hour and a half longer than it took my wife. It took us a little bit longer, but after my wife did the second road trip in the Tesla, the first road trip was just my daughter and myself, and I'll put a link to that video up here somewhere. But my wife and my other daughter went with us on the second road trip, and they were they loved the fact that we had to stop one nobody had to call out a potty break two we got to get out and stretch our legs and we got to see some country that we wouldn't normally stop and see and so it was so much fun going on those road trips so if you hear people talk about well you can't take this car on a road trip you can't do the things you would do with a normal ice gas powered vehicle I call BS on that. That is absolutely wrong. You can take this car on a road trip. If you plan things out, this car and road trips is absolutely perfect. And it is super comfortable to ride in. Um, the, the, the road noise is, is low. I mean, it's just absolutely perfect. I love this car. And then for day to day driving. So I drive 30 miles each way, 60 miles round trip back and forth to work. And the fact that I can get up in the morning and have my battery charged and not ever have to worry about stopping at a gas station to do what I need to do on a daily basis is just awesome. It, it removes the stress of having to worry about what gas prices are or um, if did I leave work in time so I can stop and get gas? Am I going to be late to work because I had to stop and get gas? All those things and worries that, that we had as, as gas-powered vehicle um, owners are gone. They're out the window. I, I plug in when I get home. My car charges overnight, and when I get up in the morning, it's at the 80% that I charge it to for the summer, and we're ready to go. If we want to go out to dinner or we need to go to town to do some stuff, it's not a big deal because I still have enough range to be able to do that. So we have not run into any point in this one-year ownership where we went, oh man, we have to take the Volkswagen, we have to take my wife's car because I didn't have enough charge to do what we needed to do. We have not had a single issue with that. And so because of that, it's just, I highly recommend it. If you're on the fence of whether or not you're gonna buy an EV, there's, there's nothing to worry about. All right, so now I wanna talk about, I'm gonna move into the car and sit down a little bit. All right, so there's just two things that I would do differently. And basically, the first one is has to do with, with charging. I decided to put in a NEMA 1450 plug, and I think that was a good decision. I, I, I think that's a great decision. But I decided to use the the mobile charger that comes with the car or came with the car when I bought it. Now you have to spend $200 to get that mobile charger. And I would highly recommend having that with you. I've used it on my road trips. It's nice to take along, plug into relatives houses and be able to charge the car and not have to worry about it. But I chose to use that for my daily charging. I think that that is, while it works and while it's functional and it does what I need it to do, I think that that just having it in my car and making sure I don't forget it is a good thing. So if I had to go back in time and do it all over again, I'd probably probably put in either the Tesla wall charger or a different type charger that's out there now. And, and actually now waiting a year, there are so many other companies out there that make very high quality 40 amp chargers for your garage that plug into a NEMA 1450. It's kind of a good thing that I waited, but I will tell you upcoming in future videos, I will be changing out how I charge my video, video or how I charge my car. So make sure you again, subscribe so you don't miss that video. But that would be my number one thing that I would change is how I charge my car. My second thing on how I or in what I would change. I want to actually step out of the car again, and that is PPF. So I did PPF my car, and I'm not sure if you're going to be able to pick it up in videos here, but you'll see that I have some bubbles in the PPF here, and on this corner here, 
the paint protection film is peeling up. So what I would change with regards to the PPF is first off, I would wrap the entire car. I would do the entire car PPF just because it offers such great protection. I actually got a ding on the side of my car on the passenger rear door from something flying up on the highway and it was a very, very minor ding. I was able to touch it up with paint and you can't tell it's there, but had I had PPF there, it would not have given me the ding in the paint and it, you know, I wouldn't have had to do that. So I would do a full, if you're gonna PPF it, do a full car if you can afford it. And the second part of the PPF is do not do a pre-cut paint protection film. The PPF that I put on was pre-cut and if you noticed around the front you'll you'll you could see that the emblem is actually cut out the PPF is cut out around the the Tesla emblem on the front and that is where that bubble is forming and then on the edge the corner that I showed you <clears throat> that is peeling just because it's it's a corner edge none of the PPF is wrapped around and tucked in and done the right way so if I was going to do it all over again I would actually make sure that the PPF is not a pre pre-cut PPF, but that it will tuck around the edges of the body and tuck to the inside so that it's protected from, from rolling up and coming undone like that. I'm actually probably going to end up taking the paint protection film off of the hood and either wrapping it in a matte black or putting another coat of PPF on it that is not pre-cut, that doesn't have the logo cut out. But that is... Um, the second thing and really the only other thing that I would do differently when I bought my Tesla. So those two things are the charging and the PPF. Now let's talk about the modifications that I've done that I absolutely love to this car. All right, so there are a handful of modifications. Now, if you look in my description down below, you will see all of the different items that I've put in my car. I've tried to keep it up to date. I've tried to put links down there for everything that I've purchased and used on my car, but there are five or six in particular that I absolutely love and, and if I bought another Tesla, I would probably do these all over again. So let's walk through those. The first one is this tandem that you get to see as the driver. And let me roll up this window and get rid of this glare a little bit here. This tandem that's in front of the driver with the yoke steering wheel with the white leather, Napa leather, I absolutely love this. First off, it's a head turner. It gets lots of questions. I get a lot of questions about it and that leads to conversations about Tesla but it's so comfortable to drive on road trips just resting your hand down here at the bottom and or putting it up top here and I absolutely love this but then with the screen in the back you know this gives you a full screen that shows you your miles per hour time temperature how many miles you have on the odometer and that's not correct it, it's got to update for some reason sometimes it goes back in mileage but as soon as you start the car it will always go to the current mileage but it tells you your battery remaining on this side and your miles remaining on this side and then it is actually Apple CarPlay as well. And I've done tons of videos on this, so I'm not going to talk about it too much. So check out those videos. I'll put links to those up above. But uh, both of these products are from Handshow, and I do have a discount code uh, below that is for Handshow. I actually have quite a few discount codes below, so check those out and make sure that you're using those discount codes and getting your um, uh, savings off of these products. So my first two are are the yoke steering wheel and the screen. The third one for me, and this is kind of a selfish one for me, is this screen swivel. I absolutely love this. I'm the driver. I want the cockpit to be all about me as the driver. And as I'm sitting here and you're getting somewhat of a, a, a point of view from my point of view, you can tell that Everything is aimed at me, the driver, and having that screen swivel on there, and this one tilts up and down as well, and um, it 
it, it, it has made such a difference just being able to see everything that's on the screen from the speed and the, 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 the battery and everything that you need to see right here in case you don't want to look at this screen to look at it. This screen is very, very easy to look at and I absolutely love it. The third one, the probably one, one that I like, or I guess this would be the fourth one, probably one that has led me to use this part of the car even more is this power frunk. Again, this is from Handshow and you can see the frunk opens automatically and it has made it so that I use this frunk way more than I ever did before. Installation was a little, I had a problem with it because I made one mistake during installation, but it's not that hard. It can be done by you in your garage on a Saturday, but not only does it automatically open, but it automatically closes. So that eliminates the, the, the problem that a lot of Tesla owners will have where they have the dents right here from pushing that door closed and it makes it so that you don't get those dents and it makes such a big difference. That power frunk is absolutely awesome. The next two kind of just go to creature comfort and keeping the car clean. The first one is a good set of floor mats. Now I am rocking the Oedro floor mats that I got off of Amazon. I got them for free to test out. And I actually really like them. They're a rubber set, but there are so many different floor mat makers out there right now. I probably get one or two emails a week asking me to test out floor mats. I've actually started to say no because I have four different sets of floor mats in my garage. And so um, I'm not gonna use them all. And so I, I say no, and I, I don't test floor mats anymore because there's just so many out there on the market. So I just say, find a good set that you really like. I have videos on floor mats. So check out my video library and look at the floor mat videos if you're trying to figure out what to get. I have a video on how to clean them and which ones clean up better. I have review videos on a couple different. So check those out and just get yourself a set of good floor mats. The second one is this, this sunscreen. And I use this in the summertime because it makes such a big difference. But what makes this one different is the fact that it actually is split in the middle. And so it's a two piece. And so it doesn't have the normal sag that you would see. You'll see that this one is tight against the top all the way around and I don't have any sag in the middle. And the best part about this one is it has a front piece and a rear piece. And so if I wanted to, I could actually take out the front piece or the rear piece and just rock the other half and not have to worry about it. But I have a link to that down below as well. It's been one of the more popular items that, that has come off of my channel that's been bought on Amazon. So, so check it out, it's a, it's a great product. So now to the part of the video that I'm sure a lot of people would 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 like to hear and that is would I buy an EV again or more specifically would I buy a Tesla Model Y again? The answer to that question is a simple yes. Absolutely would I buy a Tesla Model Y again. And actually any EV at this point as long as it meets your needs for range and quality is a, is a good thing to buy. I just bought my wife a VW Tiguan about seven months ago, six months ago. And when that car is ready to go, we will be bringing another EV into our household. It will not be another gas powered vehicle. We have decided that um, having an EV is the way to go. There's no need for an ICE vehicle because we can take our EVs on road trips as I talked about. And so absolutely yes. If you're on the fence about whether or not adding a Tesla or any other electric vehicle to your garage is the right thing to do, I say yes. But there are a few things that you need to know before you buy that EV. And, and, and I'll go through those real quick before we wrap this video up. The first one is whether people believe it or not, you are going to save money on fuel. I already demonstrated that. I've looked at this multiple times throughout this first year of owning my Tesla Model Y, but you are going to save money on fuel. 
So what you do with that money savings is up to you. Put it on towards the car itself. Um, take your significant other out to eat more often. Buy your kids more stuff. Whatever you want to do, you are going to have a fairly significant savings in fuel. And you're going to need to know what you're going to have to do with that extra money. The second one, and I don't think a lot of people talk about this, is tires just don't last as long on an electric vehicle as they do on a gas-powered vehicle. And that has a couple uh, reasons behind it. The first one is that an EV is typically a lot heavier than a normal car. I mean, you're talking about 1,200 pounds-ish, a little over 1,000 pounds-ish additional weight because of the battery of this car, and it's a low weight, so it's putting a lot of pressure on those tires. And the torque. The torque in these cars is absolutely amazing. And the thing about the torque is there's no torque band. You know, it's not your best torque at 2000 RPM or 5000 RPM or whatever. It's torque all the time. The torque band is flat. You have the same amount of torque at zero miles per hour as you do at 80 miles per hour. So when you get used to that and you stand on the accelerator to pass somebody or just because you like going fast, all of that is harder on your tires and is going to wear them out faster. So keep that in mind. You are going to go through tires a little bit faster. The third one is kind of uh, a joke, but it's not really. And that's that if you were not already in this mode, you may become obsessed with keeping your car clean. I've always been like this. My cars have always been something that I work and strive to keep clean. But I could see that if you are not that type of person, you're gonna get talked to a lot by a lot of people about your electric vehicle. You're gonna wanna keep it clean. You are going to become obsessed with keeping it clean. If that's something that, that is right for you, make sure you check out our channel sponsor for today's video, Vaj Auto Care. Use my code RATS Tesla, and that'll save you some money as well. So, um, little shameless plug there, but but you will become obsessed with keeping this car clean. I have the white interior in this car and I always get the questions, how do you keep it clean? Isn't it hard to keep clean? Isn't it hard to deal with? No because I keep it clean and I do it every week. I do the same thing every week, week in, week out, to keep my car looking the same, looking clean, the paint polished, the interior clean, the white seats cleaned, everything cleaned and vacuumed. And I, I do that because I like the way the car looks when it's clean. So that's another thing, you're gonna become obsessed. The the next one I kind of touched on a little bit, and that's if you're an introvert and you don't like talking to people and answering questions, get used to talking to people and answering questions. They're going to want to know about your experience owning an electric vehicle. Now, in some cases, it's easy. Just tell them, yeah, watch Rats Tesla on YouTube or watch YouTube. I call it YouTube University at my house, um, and you can get all your questions answered. But if you're someone that likes to talk about your car, talk about your car. It will help the movement. I'm not saying you have to be a Tesla salesman, but selling an electric vehicle and making people understand that electric vehicles are a good thing and electric vehicles can take road trips and, and do all these things that you can do in a gas powered vehicle. That's important for this movement. And so I would say become aware of your surroundings and be ready to talk to people when they ask you questions. And then the last thing that that I've noticed is, you know, when I had my ICE car, I never even paid attention to charging stations. When you get a, 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 a EV, an electric vehicle, you are going to notice that there are a lot more charging stations than you thought there were. Tesla superchargers are pretty much everywhere. They're tucked in in places that you never even thought that they would be tucked in. Hotels have superchargers. There are superchargers at gas stations. In Colorado, we have gas stations called Come and Goes. They're starting to put superchargers in. Uh, I've noticed a couple at some Phillips 66 and some Conoco's. So they're starting to pop up a lot more places. And I know that there's a bill out there to add more superchargers and Tesla's talking about doubling the superchargers out there, but also Electrify America, ChargePoint, those guys are starting to pop up a lot more places and you will notice that a lot more 
as an EV owner. But that'll do it for my one year review, 20,000 mile review video. I hope that I was able to answer any of your questions. If there's questions that you still have about owning an EV, owning a Tesla, drop them in the comment section down below. I am typically pretty good at answering questions and responding to people. I try and stay on top of that. But if you have a question, make sure you drop it below. As always, subscribe, hit that bell. I know I've mentioned it a couple times and I appreciate those that have subscribed. Uh, make sure you, you, you follow along, hit the like button if this video helped you out. And if there's any questions that you have at any point, jump on a video and like I said, ask the question in the comment and I will respond. I hope that I was able to get to a lot of the things that people want to talk about when they talk about owning a Tesla for the first year. Like I said, I would absolutely buy another one and I don't think as far as I go, I will ever own another gas powered vehicle. I will always have an EV and more than likely it will always be a Tesla. You hear about build quality issues and all these things from, from um, people, but I will tell you that when I bought my Volkswagen Tiguan, there were build quality issues as well, things that the dealer had to fix. You're gonna get that no matter what you buy, but I would say buy a Tesla buy an EV. They are so much fun to drive. They're so much fun to have in your garage and they are just a saver. They might cost a little bit more up front, but in the long run, you are going to save a ton of money on fuel costs.